Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we are going to see if we can maximize our log yield from the trees that we felled earlier, uh, two weeks ago, one week ago, who knows, I can't even keep it together, as we produce the floorboards we need for our chicken church project. So uh, jump in as we make some sawdust. All right, so the first log that I have on the mill, plus these two larger logs here at my feet, these are part of those trees that I fell in previous episodes. In fact, one of them is, is the tree that we got hung that was just in uh, uh, the last video that we posted on Friday. So I'm anxious to put uh, the saw and blade to that one. Since that one fought me so much, I'm ready to get the last laugh on that one. So we're going to turn that into some boards here soon. But what I want to do is try to maximize the log yield. Even though I've got plenty of trees to pull from, obviously it would just be bad stewardship not to try to get the best number of boards out of it. And of course, you know, less wear and tear on the mill, less wear and tear on the, um, the blades, less logs I'm dragging, all that type of stuff. So it just makes sense to do that. So we're going to use sorcery called math to see if this is gonna help us out. So my goal is six inch wide boards by you know, one inch, maybe a little less since they're just floor boards. We'll probably do a true four quarter, just because that's easy to do on the scale. But I want to be able to see what I can get cant size, you know, which is the square log after you've cut four sides off, to see what that cant size is going to be before I actually put the blade into it to make sure that I'm getting the best yield possible. So I know right now what I've taken is the diameter of this log from the short end, and I put the short end this time at the front of the mill, so it helps me line it up a little bit better. And I want to have as, as little wane as possible on these boards. And wane, of course, is just the absence of wood. So I want to have true rectangular shaped boards here. Since they're going to be the floor of the chicken coop, we don't want big gaps where critters can sneak up through. So I know my average diameter of this poplar log on the tiny end is right around 10 inches. It, it varies a little bit because obviously trees don't grow in a perfect cylinder, but that average is right at 10. So there's actually three different equations that I'm familiar with on how to determine what kind of square cant you can get out of a round log. The first one is the most simple, and that's just 30% of the diameter will give you that square. So we've got a 10 inch, again, I'm on the big end of the log, uh, just for video purposes. But if, let's say this was the 10 inch end, 30% of 10, of course, is 7. So by that equation, I should be able to get a 7 by 7 cant out of it. So the second equation I'm familiar with is half plus the half of the tip diameter. So that just simply is take the 10 inch diameter, divide it in two, so that's five, and then take half of that five, so that's 2.5. So that'd be seven and a half inch cant that we should be able to get out of that. So the third equation and the most complicated, this one cracks me up, is what they consider to be the most accurate. And by they, I mean the lumber forms and stuff is the square root of half of the square of the diameter. So that's the square root of half of the square of the diameter. So the diameter is 10, you square that, you get 100. You take a half of that, that's 50. So the square root of 50 equals my calculator. Do you guys remember in math class in junior high where your math teacher would say, you gotta learn to do that in your head because you're not gonna carry a calculator everywhere you go. <laughs> All right, so 50 squared is 7.0710067, blah, blah, blah. So this says right at seven inch cant squared. So it looks like our general consensus is somewhere between seven and a seven and a half. Now that's all well and good, but it really comes down to the ability of the sawyer. Can I place the blade in the proper places to yield that size cant without any wane. So that's going to be the first test to see if I can do it. But let's see how our math stacks up to our, our milling work and put our um, proverbial money where our mouth is or our measurements where our sawdust is. Let's make some sawdust.
Okay, so I did my first four passes to get a square cant, or a rectangular cant, actually. And I was being much more conservative in my cuts because I wanted to try to maximize for this example. So these first four passes still have some wane on them, and I'm going to have to correct that. But let's see what we've got so far, and I can show you how much wane we have. So that produced a 10 by 8. So obviously my, my log was a little bit more oval, but produced a 10 by 8. And I can stand this up 90 degrees now, and I think I can take the wane off the 10 inch side so we can get closer to a square. But I may be able to get 8 inches out of this. We'll see. <clears throat> but of course, this is on the big end. So let's go down and look at the small end. Or the tip end, I guess is the proper term. So definitely more wane on this end that we've got to take out. And obviously got a bad split, but we're not going to factor that in. So let's uh, let's rotate and see if we can get some of this top wane out. All right, so after multiple passes, shaving off a little, you saw me taking the tape there and measuring uh, up from the bunk the lowest spot where there'd be wane. And interestingly enough, on both dimensions, that measurement came to seven and a quarter. So that's what I cut out, seven and a quarter on both dimensions. So I have a perfectly square cant at 7.25 inches. Now, before you call BS on me, this piece right here is the split, so it's not... That's not wing, technically. That was the split out. Still doesn't help me produce clean boards, but it's, as far as the equation and verifying what works, that helps. So what does that really get me as far as my goal goes of getting six inch wide boards, four quarter or one inch thick? Well, not much really, of course, since um, seven and a quarter, I'm gonna have to cut down to a six inch width at some point anyway, and then start whittling it down. But, I actually have, so that seven and a quarter, I can get a one inch or a four quarter board out of that, turn it on its side, so I'll get one more board out than what I expected. And that's the same with these cutoffs here that I put on the ground. They're one inch thick, they have wane on both sides, but I can throw those back up on there and cut those so I can get them down to a six inch wide and may not have any wane at all on those, we'll see. And then also had, I don't know if you can see over here, the. The new boards, those were boards that I used to remove the last bit of wane. So those are, those are less than four quarters, some of those are three quarters, some of those are two quarter. So I usually put those there, since they're super thin, I kind of have those there just for throwaway purposes, or if I ever need something super thin for you know, walking on, or that's actually a little swampy area right there, so that's usually why those are piled up. So in looking at those three equation options, it looks like all three of them are pretty darn accurate. Um, I think all three of them would work. The first and the second one, of course, are the easiest math. 30% taken off, not a big deal. Half of a half, not a big deal either. Your square roots and, and those type of things don't necessarily want to whip out the calculator all the time. But the first equation said seven. The second equation said seven and a half. We're at seven and a quarter, so that's right in the middle. So I like that so far. Now, obviously, to really test this, we can just keep doing log after log after log. And the straighter and more cylindrical the log, the better. But let's start making some one by sixes.
All right, so that process produced 10 one by sixes, and I really can't count, can't count one of them because it's got the wane on it. That was one of my sideboards that I flipped up and was trying to cut the wane out, but there was just too much. So um, that gives me a total of nine, and we're doing an eight by 10 floor, and we're, we're boarding or we're running our, our boards width-wise the width of the eight. So that means if I do six inch boards, we put them up close together, and the true six inches, then I need eight times two, so I need 16. So nine out of 16, so I'm seven away. So one more log about that size should do it. So what's neat about that process, if you take the time to do it, is now I can come back to my log yard here and say, all right, well, I need something that I know I can at least get a six inch width out of. So like if I decided to grab this little guy right here, the top of this long log, I'm most likely not gonna be able to get a six inch square cant. So that defeats the whole purpose. So while I could still get some usable lumber out of that, it's not gonna be usable for this project. So what I'm going to do is go around and find something with a diameter of 10, maybe nine, and then be cutting it close. Let's see if I got something around that nine to 10 range so it'll produce exactly what I need without maybe wasting a bigger diameter log in case I need something eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch on down the road. So I'm going to grab a log, put it on the mill, get my other one by sixes, and I'll meet you guys up at the chicken church and we'll put the floor down. All right, so I got all my lumber up here, ended up with 18 boards out of two logs, a little bit of wane on some, but we were able to hide some of that wane either underneath my two by four wall, or since I've got extra boards, I can obviously cut the wane out and instead of having one 10 foot board that spans the whole length, I could have two boards that are obviously nailed down at appropriate floor joists. So I think I can still get it to work out. We'll see. That la the second log I put on, I didn't video it, but the second log I put on actually kind of had a little bit of a twist to it. So it, uh, it got a little funky on me. But I was able to use one of the smaller logs, so that allowed me to, uh, to keep from using the good stuff. So if you've been following the channel, we started our chicken church. It's just a chicken coop that we want to make nicer looking uh, since it's going to sit here in the backyard. There's the house. So we want to... Make a more decorative coop. This will be a, a permanent coop uh, for a small backyard flock. So we're gonna put the floor down and then we'll be ready to start setting up some walls. So my old tool belt I had for 20 plus years finally bit the dust. So I decided to break down and get a new one. And I thought if you're gonna get a tool belt, might as well go fancy pants, right? So put more tags on it than anything. So I got this DeWalt belt here. And it has built-in suspenders. Now, I'm trying to keep this a family channel, but I can only go so far. I know there's nothing sexier than a man wearing double suspenders. So, y'all just brace for it, okay? Good night, I don't know whether I'm going to build a chicken coop or hike the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> this thing is intense. You know, I got tool pouches on this side. I got tool pouches on this side. I got a hammer ring here. I got a hammer ring behind me. I got even a spot for comms in case I need to call in air support. So uh, this thing is top shelf. For some reason it's a little snug around the waist. <laughs> All right, since I milled boards over 10 feet long, of course, I can just stick them all down at once with overhang. And then when we're done, I'll run a chalk line, zip, zip both sides. We should be good to go, unless I have to cut some boards down. But it shouldn't take that long to put it down. Putting one nail in the dead center. Reason for that, of course, is these boards are green, so as they shrink, if I had two nails, then it would split even more. They're gonna split a little bit. But they'd split even more if I had two nails side by side. It wouldn't allow for that shrinkage. So we'll see how much it shrinks, then we'll see if we have to do some gap filler issues. I 
that tool belt makes your saddlebag sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I uh, got the floor down. I actually had two boards left over with some wane on it. Only had the last board I had to cut to cut out the wane. So that was good. That'll work. Got a um, chalk line the edges and cut that and square it up. But somebody left the chalk line all the way down in the workshop. So we're going to motor down there and grab it real quick and come back and finish it up. Does anyone else find themselves singing Johnny Cash when they work with one of these tools? Because you're mine, I'll chalk the line. All right, there we go. So got our floor down, maximized our two logs in producing our lumber. So it's pretty neat to go from log to lumber to finished product, well, at least finished floor product here. So uh, I'm pretty excited. Um, in fact, that's kind of reminded me, we may have to have a square dance up here soon. Fourth of July, out in the country in Appalachia. Hmm. On second thought maybe we ought to just stick with what we know now I could leave all these wood pieces on the ground and I guarantee you within 24 hours timber would have every single one of them in the front yard that's what you get for having a retriever that's what I keep telling Kel all right well that's gonna wrap it up for this video uh, come back next when we'll start erecting walls and start making this look like a building all right take care everybody <laughs> Kind of thing. Yep. This isn't gonna look hooky at all. It's supposed to look hooky. All right. On the count of three. What are we gonna do? You're gonna curtsy and bow. And I'm gonna I'll, curtsy and bow. I'll bow. You curtsy. And I'll count it out. And so, like, you'll do what? Bow and curtsy right. at the same time. And you'll count and it out. Count of three. Okay, now three. Three, two, one.